You're listening to the really useful podcast. This is the tech podcast for technophobes from makeuseof.com. We bring you a weekly dose of tech news that matters, tips, tricks, and recommendations. My name is Christian Corley, and with me this week is Ben Stegner. How are you doing, Ben? Hello, Christian. Doing good. We get, we are, we're having a cool couple of summer days here, so it's nice to uh, not be sweltering hot, although I've heard it's a little bit different across the pond right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in my uh, shed office, and it is very, very hot because it is an insulated building, and it's been heating up all day long. I've had to work indoors today. In the bit in the main house, all the curtains closed. It is a uh, ridiculous. We're, we're, in some parts of the country, there are sort of unprecedented temperatures. I say unprecedented because, you know, um, seventeen hundred years ago, when the Romans occupied the United Kingdom, they were growing grapes for wine in the northeast of England. So it can't be completely unprecedented, but certainly in uh, modern terms, sure. since meteorology has been a science, it hasn't been this hot. Um, so we're told it's very hot today it's over 30 degrees it's cooling down a bit now it's mid-20s now i think and you know in the uk we don't have air conditioning in our homes so if you want air conditioning you go to a local cafe supermarket or a shopping precinct do your cars have it Is that oh, yes thing? always sit okay. in the car yes okay okay which i've been doing a bit of um anyway so we're going to crack on with this um heat aside we've got a little bit of tech news and then we've got some tips and tricks, and then we'll finish with our recommendations as ever. Now, the first news item is a complex and in-depth thing, but it is something that you need to know about. So I'm going to go at it in its most general way possible without bogging you down with uh, jargon and um, technologies and things. Researchers have found new Spectre vulnerabilities in older chips from AMD and from Intel. Now, if you cast your mind back three or four years, this was a big deal. Uh, there was a thing called Spectre, a thing called Meltdown. All the operating systems needed patching, and it affected the efficiency of CPUs. It is not yet known if these vulnerabilities have been exploited or can be exploited, but it means that your operating system is going to get a patch to mitigate these new Spectre attacks. Uh, it's seems that Spectre is an ongoing concern. It's not yet known whether these new variations will lead, what, what any new variations of Spectre will appear in future, or indeed whether these this new one will cause problems, but it has to be patched. These two new vulnerabilities found four years after the original do suggest that there may be more to come. It's a little bit concerning. It doesn't matter whether you're using Windows or Mac OS or Linux or Android there is a concern with Spectre attacks. So this is a thing that... Uh, I mean, the byproduct of a Spectre patch is that your CPU and your computer performance will be reduced. This is quite a mess, huh? If, if you have one of these CPUs, it's the kind of thing where you, you thought you were done and then it's back with a vengeance and going to be even worse once you apply any patches like this. So that's not great to see... Yeah, I mean, it's a new vulnerability in older chips, and hopefully the, um, the the engineering mitigation steps that were taken in developing the latest generation of CPUs means that Spectre Meltdown are a thing of the past. But then again, you know, I mean, I hate to be the bearer of uh, bad omens, but there's every chance that a different vulnerability may be discovered with these uh, Spectre proof ones that we have at the moment. But if you use an older hardware, say 2018, 2019 and older, then you're going to probably get hit by this. But if you are using an older PC, there is a way that you can reinvigorate it. Chrome OS Flex. It's been certified by Google for a number of PCs and Macs. It's a version of Chrome OS that runs on standard computers uh, as a, mainly as a way for businesses to increase security and avoid e-waste and it's it's kind of useful really uh, systems from Acer, Adventech, Aopen, Apple, Asus, Dell, Fujitsu, HP uh, if you have a suitable system you can run this uh, Chrome OS variant it's kind of cool that uh, that they've done this, that Google have done this 
it's ca it's it's a bit like having a very light Linux operating system and installing it on your PC. Only it's Chrome OS and which maybe has a slightly better public image than Linux does. Yeah, I think this is a really great idea. I I, I think I heard about this a couple of years ago before I had a Chrome. This is more years ago than a couple, I guess. But before I had a Chromebook. I remember reading about like how to install Chrome OS on another device and thought that was a cool like thing I should try just to give it a try and write some articles on it. Um, yeah, but this this is great. I mean, if you have an old computer that or a business has an old computer that they're not going to use anymore anyway, they could just, you know, a hotel could put it out in the lobby and put Chrome OS on it and then it's just there for people to use. Uh, when they're, when, they're, when you're not getting Windows updates, anything like that anymore, Chrome OS will probably run on it. And since a lot of those like basic computers, people really only need a browser anyway, I don't think there'd be uh, too much loss there. So I do think that's a really cool option for yeah. people to have, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, now, if you've got a brand new computer, of course, you're probably using Windows 11. And you've probably noticed that uh, you can't create your own CDs. It's slightly mind-blowing. Uh, if you're on Windows 11, uh, you can't create CDs. But if you're on Windows 11's dev channel, you can now take advantage of native CD ripping via Media Player. Uh, this is the supposed next evolution for the app. <laughs> like losing the a limb and then having it grow back. Or the technology of 1995 <laughs> today. <Yes>. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. I mean... Yeah, so it's, be, it's going to be reinstated in Windows 11, the ability to create CDs, or rip CDs, and uh, presumably burn them as well. But, I mean, don't don't hold don't hold me to that, because, you know, ripping... C I know a lot of systems don't come with C drives, CD drives these days, but it's very easy to buy an affordable £10 CD drive connected to your computer, and, you know, rip a CD, or listen to a CD. Sure. The, the, the fact that it's, Windows 11 is an operating system that's available now and you can't rip a cd it's just mind-blowing to me yeah i upgraded to windows 11 in like february or march as i yeah. think i shared on the show at the time and I, I i have a cd drive in my system i bought one when i built my desktop five years ago and when i was building this one i figured i mean i i, I still have this so why not just buy a case with a cd drive just to have it i mean i use it like once a year if that um because i don't like to listen to cds it's more just i don't know i just like to have the option um, but I don't, I, since, since I've upgraded to Windows 11, I don't think I've put a CD in this machine. So I wouldn't even have known that you couldn't rip them, honestly, by uh, default. Well, maybe it's not for you. Um, <laughs> the dev build also has uh, the camera app enhanced with some flashy new features as well. So if you are in the Windows 11 dev build uh, path, then, or branch, then you can take advantage of at least two new features that you would expect to have already had. Windows, eh? Yeah, you can look back and think, why did I ever leave Windows 10? We're on to our tips and tricks section now. So while I melt in the UK heat, Ben is going to tell us about God Mode in Windows. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about it. It's a handy shortcut menu in Windows, which is called God Mode, and it gives you lots and lots and lots of features and tools and access to things that are useful, but all in one place. Well, that's how it used to be. I haven't actually used it in Windows 10, so I'm not 100% certain. That's certainly how I would describe it in Windows 7 or 8. Has it changed significantly for Windows 10 and 11? No, it's basically the same thing. Uh, so if you're not familiar with God Mode, it's like an informal term. There's an official name for it, and I forget exactly what it is. Let me look it up real quick. Very official here. It's it was, Fred. It's not called God Mode. It is um, the Windows Master Control Panel Shortcut. Oh, that's it. Or yeah. All Tasks folder. Yeah, God Mode was like a... When this was discovered, it was like the name that people like us called it. So it's stuck. Um, yeah, but so God Mode is basically a really nice shortcut in Windows that lets you see basically everything in the control panel all in one place. Um, so it's worked like this since Windows 7 up through 11, which is what I tested it on most recently. It, it works the exact same way. Um, all you have to do is make a new folder anywhere in on your desktop or elsewhere on your computer, and then you have to name it a very long string of characters, which I won't attempt to read out here, but if you look at the linked article in the show notes, that'll be there for you. Um, and when you do that, it'll make a, it'll change the folder into a control panel icon. And then when you click on that icon, it'll pull up a huge list of shortcuts to the control panel. There's like maybe 
100 or 150 in there. Um, and it's basically everything that you can do in the control panel, but laid out much more clearly. Um, so it so it's all broken into headers like autoplay, bit locker drive encryption, credential manager, and things like that. Windows tools system. Um, so you can search it, and then whatever you want to find is right in there. Um, so if you're often in the control panel or if you want to change a setting and you can't find it, uh, this can be a bit of an easier way to, to use it. One of the other handy features of God Mode is that you can click and drag anything and make a shortcut for that. So if there's some buried option that you use frequently, you don't want to have to open up the control panel and then click to find it. You can just drag and drop a shortcut and then have that shortcut somewhere else. So not super important for everybody, but very useful if you often dip into the control panel and just want to have access to those few things quickly. And it's super easy to use. If you don't use it, you can just delete it after you create it. So, yeah, a nice little tip that everybody should know. If how, use Windows. how often have you used God Mode in anger? Uh, oh, in anger? Uh, I would say very infrequently I've ever used it, to be honest. I remember finding out about it and thinking it was cool. So I, like, bookmarked a shortcut to it, and then I almost never really use it. I, I dip into the control panel less and less with every Windows iteration um, as they put more stuff in settings. Yeah, I do it. I, the only thing I really go into the control panel for is like looking at virtual memory or um, what's the other big one, like system protection, like like the amount of space that you dedicate to system restore. That's like not in the, uh, the new settings app at all. Okay. So I very rarely use God Mode to be honest, but it is handy, especially if yeah. you... Yeah, use a couple of those things really sure. often. They're just right there. Now, Xbox 360 games with gold are disappearing later this year. They'll no longer be included. So you won't be able to uh, play Xbox 360 games acquired through games with gold on your Xbox One or Xbox Series system. Now, what does this mean? And will you still be able to access your Xbox 360 games, Ben? Sure. So if you're not familiar, just a quick recap. So Xbox Live Games with Gold is part of the Xbox, Li Xbox Live Gold, say that three times fast, uh, subscription, where every month you get a couple of uh, quote unquote free games. I mean, they're included with your subscription um, and they're yours to keep and play as long as you have your Xbox Live Gold subscription. So that that counts whether you are signed up for Xbox Live Gold on its own or if you have Game Pass Ultimate that includes Xbox Live Gold. So for the last several years, um, since this program has been around, actually, uh, two Xbox 360 games have been part of Games with Gold every month. But Microsoft has announced starting on October 1st of 2022, the company is not going to provide any Xbox 360 games anymore. So what that means is if you have an Xbox Live Gold subscription, you'll still get free games for Xbox One and the Xbox Series X and S, but Xbox 360 games won't be included anymore. So, but the good news is that any Xbox 360 games that you have claimed in the past are yours to keep even if your subscription lapses. So for the next couple of months, uh, you can go to the Xbox Live Games with Gold page on the web or go to the Microsoft Store on your Xbox console and open up the Games with Gold page. There's instructions for that in the linked article. And when you open that up, you'll see the games that are available with Games with Gold right now, and you can claim those and they're yours to keep for the 360 games. Uh, and the release schedule for that too, one game is released in the first half of the month, and then one game is released from the 15th of the current month until the 16th of the next month. So it's kind of staggered. You have to check back twice a month to grab them. Um, and you should still grab the Xbox One titles as well, but those, if your subscription ends, those will no longer be part of your account. So you have to resubscribe to play them again. So essentially... Your subscription is going to have less value because you're not going to be getting those two games a month. So we're yeah. not sure if Xbox One games, you'll get four of them instead, uh, or if Xbox will find some other way to keep the subscription valuable. But uh, any Xbox 360 games you've claimed are yours to keep, and you should claim them until October. It's a bit of a shame, isn't it? I'm just looking in my Xbox account to have a look at which Xbox 360 games I actually have as part of this. And... There's Sensible World of Soccer. There's a few Xbox games, but not Xbox 360. When I say Xbox, I mean original Xbox. So uh, Republic Commando and Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy. They're in there. Epic Mickey 2, The Power of 2, that's been installed. Splinter Cell Conviction, I don't remember ever having that on Xbox 360. In Either as a disc on the original Xbox 360 or in Games with Gold. That's interesting. I'll have to check that out. But yeah, it is a shame isn't it? But yeah, I agree, especially because one of the strengths of Xbox for the last I believe that 
the the Xbox One started being backwards compatible like big time in 2015. It was like late 2015. And since then, every Games with Gold Xbox 360 title has been compatible with modern Xbox systems. So that's a lot of games. They, and the, the reason they game in the email is, quote, we have reached the limit of our ability to yeah. bring Xbox 360 games to the catalog. So uh, we're not sure if that means that there are literally no more backwards compatible games that are available or if there's just licensing issues where they can't get the original publishers to sign off on it or something. But yeah, if you've been subscribed for a long time, you probably have dozens and dozens of 360 games that you might not have taken a proper look at. Um, so hopefully there's a lot to... Ah, oh, here we go. There, but... Joyride Turbo and Toy Box Turbos, two car okay. games, uh, two multiplayer car games. They are the um, only Xbox 360 games we regularly play on our Xbox okay. through, uh, through that. Yeah, and thankfully, like, a lot of, like, the big, big 360 titles have been remastered or redone. You know, obviously, like, the Halo games, those are available in the Master Chief collection, for example. So, yeah. um, some of those games are, are still available. And you'll still be able to buy Xbox 360 titles on the store. It's just that they won't be available for free as part of this program. So, yeah, it's always a shame. I mean, especially because that was last year, I think, that Microsoft tried to raise the price of Xbox Live Gold. Like, they literally tried to, like, double it, I think, at least in the U.S., um, which was met with a lot of backlash, so they reversed that quickly. Um, but it's a shame to see them trying to raise the price and then offer you less stuff every month for that same subscription price. So hopefully there's some way that they make it this a little bit better of a value. Now, Microsoft aren't the only uh, console gaming company that is restricting access to older games. Nintendo has already uh, put in place steps to uh, bring down the old uh, Wii Store and the Wii U store and the DS store. In fact, the Wii store and the DS store went down and then came back up again. But uh, then that's nothing to do with its uh, planned end. That's just some downtime. And Sony also have made it harder to buy PS3 and PS Vita games. But it's still possible to buy them digitally, isn't it? That's right, yeah. So another so a recap here, since we're talking about some historical info that's been updated again. Um, so, so Sony a couple years ago, it was in 2021 actually, my years are all messed up, um, they said they were going to close the stores for the PS3 and Vita, uh, and then they backtracked on that, thankfully, because people were raising concerns about game preservation and things like that. Um, but in, in October things. 2021, yeah, yeah, for sure, because a lot of games would have disappeared at that time, um, just gone with no way to... to to play them or access them uh unless you buy an expensive disc which obviously they're going to get more expensive when you can't buy the digital copy yeah yeah so in october 2021 just to catch up if anybody is not aware of this um the company introduced a new limitation for buying digital games on the ps3 and vita um so at that time they said you can't add uh digital content to your account on a three ps3 or vita using a credit card a debit card or paypal so you can't you couldn't, you know, fund it $20 or whatever amount you wanted. And you also couldn't at checkout say, okay, this game is 1998. I'm going to fund 1998 on my card. You couldn't do that anymore. Um, they did that to quote, enhance online payment security for all PS3 and PS Vita owners. So it could be aging infrastructure, but also, you know, these older systems, the company wants to kind of wean people off of them because it costs them money to keep those servers going. So that's the catch up. Thankfully, you can still buy games if you have a PS3 and or a Vita. Um, the way that you need to do that, you can't buy them on the web version of the PlayStation Store. So that was a workaround for a while that's gone. Um, the way you need to do that is add credit to your account using the web version of the PS Store or uh, on a PS4 or PS5 console. So if you link your accounts, which all you have to do is make sure you're signed into the same PlayStation account on your PS3 or Vita, and then your modern PlayStation console or the website. And then when you go there, you can click on your account profile picture on the top right and choose payment management. And then from there, you can add funds either with a prepaid gift card. So if you buy a gift card in a store like Walmart, or if you have a credit card synced to your account, you can just fund it for $20, $50, whatever you want to do. And then that money in your wallet on PlayStation, that'll sync to your PS3 or Vita, and then you can check out there. So you can still go on the PlayStation Store for the PS3 using that system, or on the Vita using that system. It's a little bit more hoops to jump through, but it's still possible to add money to your account and shop for those older titles. One half of me thinks that they're making this intentionally more difficult, but I guess there is 
they're not really doing that, are they? But it's 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 finding the right way of keeping this open whilst progressing to whatever comes next, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, I think it makes sense. I mean, I'm not I don't I'm not an expert on the exact infrastructure of the PlayStation Store, but I would say may, maybe there are just weak security or something, which is why they don't want people making credit card transactions on the old store. I'm not certain if that's the case. Um, but this is similar to what we're seeing from Nintendo with the Wii U and the 3DS stores, as you mentioned. So I believe August 2022 uh, is when they're going to stop letting you add funds to your account on the Wii U and 3DS. But so the way that you'll be able to do it is you sync your Nintendo account to the one you use on the Switch. And then if you add funds on the Switch, you can spend that money on the Wii U or 3DS. So same thing. You can still spend it. You just have to add it in a, in a, in a roundabout way. Uh, another concern here uh, that just that just changed last month is that in June 2022, Sony did revamp the PlayStation Plus subscription. So there's now three tiers. And if you pay for the premium tier, which is the most expensive, um, you get a library of PS3 games available to stream to your PS4 or PS5. So if you have a newer system, that's another way to play these older titles. Um, although it's basically like what PlayStation now was, the streaming service, which they discontinued and folded it into PlayStation Plus. So... That's another way to play PS3 games, but if you only have a PS3, that won't help you, of course. If you had a PlayStation 4 and you had the PlayStation 4 camera and then you upgraded to PlayStation 5 or someone else in your house or a friend had a PlayStation 5 and you're thinking, can I use the PlayStation camera from the PS4 on a PS5? Is that a thing you can do, Ben? Yes, it is, thankfully. So if you have this older model of the PlayStation camera, it is compatible with the newer console. Uh, so the, the caveat is that the PlayStation 4 camera uh, uses a connector that's proprietary, and there's a port for it on the PS4, but it's not on the PS5. So Sony actually offers a free adapter for this. So if you have a PlayStation VR, there's a website linked in the uh, article in the show notes where you can enter your PSVR serial number, which it shows you how to do on the website, and then if it's a valid serial number, Sony will ship you an adapter for free, no charge, no shipping, anything like that. And then that's, that adapter is just a USB that goes to that proprietary PlayStation camera connection. You can plug into a USB port on your PS5, and then you can enjoy that camera there. Um, if, if for some reason you have a PS4 camera and you don't have PlayStation VR, there are third-party adapters you can buy that do the same thing for maybe 20 bucks. Um, as far as why you would want to do this, so the main reason is that you need the PlayStation 4 camera if you want to use the PlayStation VR on PS5. So there is a separate camera that's called the PlayStation HD camera. I'll just call it the PS5 camera for clarity. So the PS5 camera is a little bit uh, higher resolution, um, but really the only reason you would buy that camera is if you want to stream um, because it lets you show your face next to your gameplay if you want to stream from your PlayStation. There's really no other reason to buy that camera because some of the features that the PS4 supported, like logging in with your face or using the camera's microphone as like a room-wide microphone to talk to people if you're in a group, those don't work on PS5. So really the only reason to use the PS4 camera on the PS5 is if you're using VR. Um, and just so you are aware, the PS VR 2, which is on the horizon, maybe probably in 2023, I would think, that doesn't use a camera. It's, uh, it's all inside-out cameras like the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, so that won't need a camera, so you don't need to buy one for that. That's, that'll be kind of all-in-one as far as the camera tracking. So essentially, if you have a PlayStation VR and you want to use it on PS5, you're, you're eligible for a free adapter. Otherwise, there's not really much of a reason to use the, the camera on the PS5 unless you are streaming. Uh, apologies, I am sweating profusely, which either means this is a hugely exciting podcast or it's really hot. We're going to move on now to uh, the last stage of the show, which is our recommendations, in which we offer you a recommendation of something that we've experienced over the past uh, previous seven days. It might be a TV show, it might be a game, it might be a piece of hardware. Uh, Ben's going to go first because he's got something quite nifty, haven't you? I'm going to go first. I thought you should go first so you don't uh, collapse from heat. But No, no, okay, I, 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 I can keep going. Okay, I'll make it quick. Um, yeah, so my recommendation for this time is the uh, Elgato Stream Deck, which you might have heard of before if you've ever streamed, but that's actually not why I picked one up. So I have to give a shout out to uh, to Joe Keeley, uh, one of the deputy editors at Make Use Of. I had a pitch from someone that I noticed he had written some articles on, which turned me on to this. Um, so the Stream Deck, if you're not familiar, is a device by Elgato that's also known for making capture cards so you can capture your console gameplay or your 
uh, gameplay from another computer and stream it. The Stream Deck is a small device that has, they, they have a couple different ones. The Mini has six buttons, the regular one has 15, and the XL has 32, I think, that has programmable buttons that you can use to do all sorts of things on demand. So it's intended for streamers to be able to, you know, one button maybe runs an ad, one button changes their scene, one button mutes their microphone, things like that. But you can use it for productivity too, which is where I've really been liking it so far. So some examples of things you can do, you can set up a multi-chain, so you can launch multiple things with one touch so you can set it up so all the apps that you use every day when you boot up your computer you press one button and they all open up you can set it to where it switches your audio input so if you use your speakers during the day but then you're hopping on a call you press one button and your audio switches from your speakers to your headphones I have one right now where I'm, I can mute my mic with one touch so I don't have to fumble for the mute button on my microphone itself there's clock there's temperature, there's CPU usage, there's a lot of things you can do because there's a store where people make plugins that are, I think they're all free or almost all of them are free, and then they're really adaptable. And if you know what you're doing, you can also use auto hotkey or other scripts to make your own too. So um, it's a little bit pricey. The sticker price for the main 15 button one is about $150, but I got one on sale uh, around Prime Day, which was great. So I'm really liking it so far. If you are the kind of person who likes to use a lot of shortcuts, um, it's a nice extra set of buttons to use so you don't have to keep mapping things to your keyboard or mouse. Um, and you can even set up custom profiles too. So if you use different types of software, maybe you use Photoshop and Lightroom that have their own keyboard shortcuts, you could even just keep one hand on the stream deck and then just hit buttons to use keyboard shortcuts or common sets of clicks that you can save yourself with it so super cool device for productivity if even if you're not a streamer i'd definitely recommend taking a look that sounds uh that sounds really cool um just to clarify it is called a stream deck and not a steam deck which is a completely different piece of kit correct which, correct. which i'm expecting through the post later this week oh that's exciting finally <laughs> I didn't mean to press that button, but uh, that's 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 the way it goes. Okay, so my recommendation is a little bit different, as in usually we go for digital stuff, and this isn't digital. It is something I bought on Amazon Prime Day last week, and it's just a table. Oh. Now, the reason I'm recommending it is because normally when, when I buy tables, there is uh, assembly required, and uh, I... I was looking for a very specific size of table. It's quite a narrow table. It's about 60 centimetres deep. And it's about two metres long. Just short of two metres long, I beg your pardon. And it had to be a narrow table in order to fit into my office. Now, you know how things are. When you're rearranging stuff um, to make space, it always turns into a, a uh, kind of uh, disastrous, you've got less space at some point midway through the process, which is why I bought this desk. And what it does, it fits perfectly. I can get stuff underneath it. I can get stuff on top of it. But the most important thing is I got, I unpacked it and it was pre-assembled. Ooh. Now, I'd put time aside for assembly. And all I had to do was unfold the legs. And uh, there you go. <laughs> that bad boy is pre-assembled. And also, I don't know. <laughs> this is a little bit silly. However, one of the items of packaging was a sort of two meter long by well 60 centimeter wide piece of foam which is not unlike the type of thing that you take camping to lay on in a tent so i've kept it okay like a like a like a, like a bedroll that yeah yeah okay. yeah huh it's right, perfect yeah, length a little, little little bonus there yeah, yeah it's the right there's right sort of thickness as well so i thought well no point wasting that is it because you know it's it's going to go in a bin. It's going to go through the whole waste disposal process and maybe get shredded. It's not great for the environment, shredding stuff like that up. And uh, I can just keep it and lay on it next time I go camping. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Hey, that's that's uh, that's the smart reuse stuff. I've kept from things I've gotten shipped before when I've liked the material they use to like pack it in. I've kept that. I, mean, I don't ship stuff very often, but I figure when I do, I'm going to want to have some of that. And it's better than having to go buy bubble wrap or whatever every time. You know, for the few times I ship things. So, yeah, that's good. That's that's being smart and reusing stuff. I like that. Cool. And uh, just if you were desperate for something digital, I have launched a new podcast, which is called Save State, which is a retro gaming podcast, which is a bit newsy, a bit opiniony, and it will have recollections of old games in it as well. And I may even play some games at the same time, although that's not an entirely visual thing. But uh, I, I do have a feeling that uh, maybe 
playing some retro games and talking over them might be quite interesting. However, uh, for this time being, you can uh, subscribe to it on iTunes or you can find it at gamingretro.co.uk. It is called Save State. If you were desperate for something retro to listen to, you know. In the meantime, you're listening to the really useful podcast from makeuseof.com. And you can, if you don't already, you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. You can listen to us on Spotify, on Amazon, on Player FM, on pretty much anywhere you get podcasts, really. If you leave a review for the show, we will read it out. Although you should probably just uh, give us a little prod to let us know that you have left a review on Apple Podcasts so we can find the review. And then we will read it out. If you do that, that helps us immeasurably. And if you want to get in touch with the show, you can do so by contacting either Ben or myself on Twitter or make use of on Twitter. You can find the links to that in the show notes or leave a comment on Facebook. We'll be back for a new really useful podcast soon. Until then, it's goodbye from us. (laughs) 